Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Career Mode with me, Redneck Einstein. How is everyone? Today we've got a cool video, or I have a cool video for you. First of all, let me introduce you to the unmanned Duna Science Lander Mark 1. This is a brute of a rocket, um, and let me just talk you through a little bit of it. You can see it's got some landing legs up here. Now what I intend to do is land it on Duna and Ike in the same mission and collect all the requisite science that we'll be able to get. So without further ado, let's get into our launch procedure. Now you might notice this has got a huge thrust to weight ratio of 1.89, which I know is ridiculously high. And it it, it flies perfectly, like uh, it just really ascends very, very quickly. So I'm just going to turn on the aerodynamic forces overlay just so you can see what aerodynamic forces are acting on this. I've actually tested the rocket under various conditions, um, whether that be with half thrust from my liquid fuel boosters and obviously full thrust from the solid fuel boosters and like I'm doing now with full thrust and full thrust tend, even though we've got aerodynamic forces acting on our rocket full thrust tends to sort of preserve the highest amount of delta V so that's just something to be aware of if any of you are thinking oh you're doing it all wrong Riney um, I have tested it so let's get up into the atmosphere you can see it's a freaking brute and you'll be pleased to hear that uh, Jebediah, et al, Bob and Bill and all those other wonderful Kerbins are not going to be on this trip. So there'll be no chance of anyone getting left stranded out there. Now the thing you have to be aware of here is just the the aerodynamic forces acting on my rocket. I don't quite know how to, how to launch this into a good gravity turn, but I think this is fine. We only had a little window of quite a lot of uh, gravitation uh, aerodynamic forces acting on it take if i can just guide your attention to the top left hand corner where it says apoapsis height up here um that is quite high already it's at sixty-five thousand meters as i speak and so that is why i had quite a, uh, a rapid um transition into a horizontal flight for my rocket um i didn't want to i don't need my apoapsis to be so high i just need it to be up out of the atmosphere so um you, you should see that the this stage of my rocket should get me to almost enough orbital velocity you'll see it in a second while our apoapsis is now over the ninety-five thousand mark and we're now out of fuel so what i'm going to do now is just let my rocket coast into its orbit or at least coast until we get to the apoapsis and then I'm going to do my little change in uh, change in orbit right there. So that's going to require another 314.6 delta V. So I'm trying to make this mission as um, efficient as possible. But uh, you, some of you may um, think I'm doing it wrong or whatever. But, you know, feel free to critique me at your leisure. Now we need to just fast forward until we get to our apoapsis. So we're going to aim for a node in T of about 14 seconds. We're nearly there. There we go. Meaning we'll do half our burn before we get to the apoapsis and half our burn after the apoapsis. So what we should see here is a lovely circling of my orbit. Let's take a look. Now before I escape um, the sphere of influence around Kerbin, I am going to go in and check on my little science modules to see if we've got any science that we can just beam back from those before we continue on our merry way to Duna. Alright, there we go. That's good enough for me. We're in a stable orbit now. Apoapsis 102,000. Periapsis 93,000. Brilliant. And we've got 5,702 Delta V left. The rocket, I think, in total in the VAB had about... 9,000 so should be enough to get me to Ike and Kerbin. Obviously, I'm going to aim for Ike first and then um, land, gather all the science, then take off and head over to Duna where it will meet its final resting spot um, by coasting down using the parachutes that I have on it. Now, I'm just looking. Where are the parachutes? Parachutes? I had plenty of parachutes on it. Ah, we're looking at the wrong thing. That's because I switched. Durr. That's <laughs> why such an idiot. Now, okay, here you can see we've got a little bit of science on here, so 13. But electric charge is a bit of an issue. All right, well, we'll just let that recharge. Maybe it'll be a case that it will never recharge enough. I don't know. I'm going to fast forward a little bit and see. So that's 
Ah, I know what we need to do. If we stop the research now, then uh, all will be well because the, the solar panels will get a chance to recharge and then we'll be able to get the data from it beamed back. Now, we've got the Coben Polar Orbital Research Unit, which I'm going to switch to. And I'm probably going to do the same thing with that one as well. Stop the research. And so far, that has accrued 11.217 science. So not exactly that successful. But if we go back to the solar system overview, we should find that we've got a solar orbital research unit as well. Let's just check in on that one. I'm hoping to find an immense amount of data on board. There we go. That's what I like to see. See that? Look at all that science going up like crazy. So if I now stop research on there, look how much data it's still got, 472. And then transmit that. I suspect it won't be able to transmit it all because it's going to take up too much electricity. But you never know. All right, let's fast forward and see how that pans out. Yeah, we're kind of running out of electric charge. All right, well, that is something I'll have to take care of in between missions. Um, off camera, I guess. So let's now go back to Kerbin, which is over here. We'll focus on that. And we'll begin transitioning our rocket into its escape from Kerbin. There we go. Duna Unmanned Science Lander. That's the one. So we switch to that. Now we need to build up our velocity to about 33, 3400, I think. And what, I, what you want to do here, which I didn't really realize until quite late on in my sort of playthroughs of Kerbin, is you want to try and escape at the side of the planet that makes you go in the same direction as the line that goes around the sun. You see that? So you want to kind of escape that way. So with that being said, it looks like a good place to set our maneuver node would be here. So, like so, let me just check that's correct. Make sure we're going in the right direction. I think we're going in the wrong direction there. Right, let's just fast forward and see which direction we're flying in. Yeah, we're going around that way. Brilliant, okay. So, that means we're near, we're near enough on the right side of the planet. We'll do it there. So, our burn will be in about two minutes or so. There we go, just increase our velocity by dragging out the prograde marker and that's good enough for me that'll do so that's going to require a delta v of approximately 934.5 that's going to take quite a long time to get that far actually so let's not leave it too far before we start our burn i think i'll do I'll do my burn now and we can just enjoy the pleasant vista as we glide over and through the Vacuum of space over Kerbin. Look at that. That looks quite beautiful. It's a shame there's no Kerbin on board. But the next video after this one may be where we get our Kerbin to land on Duna. Or indeed Ike. Ike would be the easier of the two. Now, as this accelerates and escapes, I will set up the maneuver. And um, after that, the next time you'll see me will be around Duna. So if we fast forward here get it into its little sol orbit it'll be nicely parked escaping the sphere of influence of Kerbin beautiful now what we can do is find where Duna is on here so there's Duna and I use the um, Kerbal alarm clock so we should have a good um, good transfer window here now if I zoom in here and accelerate out oh there we go we've already got our encounter near enough so let's drag this around a little bit and try and get a good encounter. There we go, nearly. Oh, bit too far. Should them two little arrows should go together very soon? Nope, they're refusing. There we go. Well, the idea is we make them go together. And then we will have our encounter with Duna. So I'm going to carry on fiddling with this until we get a good encounter. And the next time you'll see me, I'll be around Duna. See you in a second, guys. All right, welcome back, guys. So I wanted to show you a little trick, actually, here. On on your trajectory, trajectory, sorry, towards Duna, you can actually 
perform another maneuver which will maybe meet the requirements of what you want to do. So if you remember we discussed that I wanted to get into contact with uh, Ike first of all. So let me show you what I've done here. So I, I think at some point here by altering my trajectory I should be able to get an encounter with Ike. There we go. You can see it right there. So by adjusting my velocity by only 8.7 meters per second in three days time in this, this given direction we will be able to get an encounter with Ike. So it should save some Delta V rather than having to get into orbit of Duna first. We can do it all before we actually get to Duna and and like I say it should save us a lot of Delta V. I just need to make sure I burn correctly here and don't miss my window of acceleration. There we go, so we should be able to do it now. And if we're careful here, there we go. So you can see I've now got a trajectory that will take me into a periapsis 885 meters out from Ike. And from there I can adjust my orbit by burning retrograde and get into a landing position. So see you in a second, guys. Welcome back everybody. So here we are in our little spacecraft approaching Duna. Um, everything is the same as it was just now and we just need to speed up until we encounter it as it rotates around Duna which is very very soon. So let's just fast forward here and then remember we've got to burn retrograde in order to be captured into an orbit of Ike. So let's burn at the periapsis. Shouldn't require too much Delta V, I wouldn't think, but you never know. Ah, it looks like it's going to require about 600. I guess that's because we're experiencing the gravitational effects from Duna. Now, best thing for me to do here would be to focus on Ike. And without bothering to orbit it, we can just set up our landing profile-ish. So I guess we can land anywhere we want. So 583... Delta V. Now I'm going to do the burn and then I'm going to try and gather some science if I can before we go into full landing mode. So let's fast forward again. So about 33 seconds, that's when we want to start our burn. So we still got 3,836 Delta V left, which should be enough to land us on Ike, take off again from Ike, and then have some sort of landing on Duna. That's the theory. Let's hope it works in practice. There's our little rocket. Beautiful. Look at that. Where's Ike? Can anyone see it in the sky here? There it is. Hiding in the shadow of the sun. Okie dokie. Let me just go quiet here a second as I focus. There we go. So our periapsis is 24,000 meters. And on this particular playthrough, this is the closest we have been to Ike yet. So let me use my little X science mod. See what things are available to be researched. So we can do a temperature scan. Beautiful, beautiful. We'll log the temperature. Now, I'm just going to use the instruments that can be reused. So how much electricity do we have? 400 tel, a full complement. So we'll gather that as 14 science. On the other side here, yep, is my little pressure barometer instrument. So that will give us can't see. Move out of the way, X science. Another 21 science. Brilliant. And material study and mystery goo. So, Mr. Magoo, where are you? There it is. We've only got two of these. I wonder if I should just use one on the surface. Yeah, I'll tell you what. We'll do one in orbit, and then we'll do one on the surface, and then we'll do Mr. Magoo on Duna with another rocket another time. So, how much electricity have we got left enough to beam back this another 10.5 science brilliant now we want to worry about landing so let's fast forward our little rocket and we're coming whizzing around towards Ike now okay so in a second I'm gonna switch to this view so we can start start burning retrograde in order to land on the surface here so let's turn on my engines and we're going to need to use about 400 or more delta v to land on this now ike has a really low gravity let's just go out here and take a little look at ike so if we go to 
information, it should say, but apparently not. Right. Why are you not telling me about the planet? Maybe I'm reading it wrong. Probe, max acceleration. Oh, well, not to worry. Trust me on this. Ike has very low gravity, so it's pretty easy to land on. What I am going to do now is deploy my legs. Now, if I press G, which is what you normally press to deploy your legs, these legs will deploy as well, and we don't need both. Okay, so now I've got to concentrate. Okay, 242 delta V. So we're like 15,000 meters up, but the terrain is only 5,200 meters below us. So you need to be aware of that. It's a really good thing to bear in mind when using uh, Kerbal Engineer Redux. It gives you that information. Brilliant. Okay, we're coming into land, 3,900 meters up. Now, good landing speed, if you're uh, familiar with Kerbal at all, is about mm, 6 meters per second is generally what's tolerated by the game. Um, six, six and a half you can get away with, I guess. Oh dear, where are we going now? Change direction. There we are, 2,000 meters up. Now, I'm just fast forwarding because I kind of know what I'm doing here. But... Um, I recommend you don't go too crazy with the fast forward. There we go. So surface. Ah, there we go. So just by clicking in the middle of my nav ball here where it says surface, I can change and it shows me which direction I need to be burning retrograde in order to get a nice cushy landing. Okay, do you think I'm going to do this? 400 meters up. We've only got 2,600 meters per second left. Should be enough to land on Duna. I don't, ex I don't exactly need that much um, uh, Delta V from here to get to Duna, so it should be all, all gravy. Let's just fast forward. Yay, and we're down to 5 meters per second. And 130 meters above the surface. Let's cut. It's quite difficult with this engine we've got here because it's a little tiny press of the shift key. Alters our speed quite a lot. There we go. I'm just ever so slightly grazing the button here. Let's just slow down a bit more. Whee! We have landing! Excellent! Oh, it's kind of moving across the surface a bit. Brilliant. So now we can gather some more science. So I'm going to use my Mr. Magoo. I'm going to save the Science Junior for use on Duna, I think. Um, let's beam that back. There's another 15 science. It's a shame we haven't got a Kerbal here so we can get him out and have a little play. But never mind. Alright, let's use my my thermometer. We'll beam that back also. We should have enough electricity to beam all of these instruments data back. Another 30 from that. And job is a good one. Right, if you want to see me continue with this rocket onto Duna, then uh, please join me for the next episode. For me... Ryan Stein, I am out of here. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please send me your comments and leave a thumbs up. Just click below the screen, leave that thumbs up. Thanks ever so much, guys. Take it easy. See you very soon.